Hey all, I'm Brad of Brave the Woods. Today I want to show you five tips on how to make your own dynamic color palettes for your illustrations or for your designs using pretty much any digital art program. And if you're familiar with my work, you know how much I love color. Now two things are true. One, making your own custom color palette can be kind of difficult and sometimes time consuming. And two, there are a ton of free color generators online that you can browse through and choose from. Look, I'm not opposed to pulling colors from existing palettes or even using color generators, but that search can sometimes get you going down a rabbit hole where you lose a ton of time. And most of the time you have to adjust the palette anyways to make it work for your specific project. So you might as well learn how to make your own. Now I'm gonna be demonstrating these tips using Adobe Photoshop, but the specific art software or app really isn't that important. These tips are things I implement when using any of my art programs, whether it's Adobe Photoshop or Illustrator or Affinity Designer or even Procreate on iPad Pro. Okay, so for tip number one, start with very few colors. You don't need a thousand colors in your palette right away. You can end up with that, but let's start with one color, maybe just one, like a base color and try to make sure it's vibrant. Well, for me at least, I like to have a nice vibrant color palette to start. And it might be one base color and then two others, maybe a, a secondary and an accent color. So total three colors. Let's, uh, let's make one up on as we go. Maybe like an orangey color. There we go. Like I said, I like to keep them real vibrant because I have a few other tips here on how to kind of get the colors in between here. But uh, we'll start with our, so that'll be our secondary, and this will be our, our accent color. Here we go, this yellow. Big, strong yellow. It's kind of funny, I always find out that when I'm making these, I end up going with primary colors. But then I can venture off from there and get really crazy with them. But for some reason, my mind always goes to the primary colors to start. So three is nice because if you're trying to unify your color palettes, having tons and tons of colors, it makes it just that much harder to make sure they all feel unified. So three is a great start. And then you can quickly start building off of them um, some other variations of those colors, even with just little sliders there. I have a lighter blue. I can go maybe more of magenta in there got the more purple color, and then I can start building off of each of those colors and I have a whole bunch of other options right away. But I still need to make sure if I wanna build these off from each other that everything feels related and that goes to another tip of mine. Tip number two, make sure you have enough contrast. You want those lights and darks in there. Right now, if we look at our palette that we already have, it's looking pretty similar in value. And the way I can tell is by doing either the squint method where you squint at it and if it all looks kind of the same, then you can't tell much of a difference. That means it's probably too similar in value. But you can also convert it to grayscale and uh, or black and white. Let's do flat and sure. Sure, okay. <laughs> and then you can see automatically how different they are, how much they, how much uh, value change there is. Now in the yellow, there's definitely more value change and this is clearly darker, but it's not a huge difference. You want something a little bit more extreme for a more flexible palette. The only exception might be is if you're doing like psychedelic art or pop art where you want those colors to be bright and vibrating. So let's add some contrast to this palette. We want a really dark dark and a really light light. So the way I might start off doing this is by picking my core color and then making a dark color off of it. It would be easy just to do black, but maybe I wanna do more of like a dark blue purpley color. Let's try that. There we go, that's a nice dark color. And I'll use that as my, my real dark dark when I need it. Maybe not need it all the time, but it's nice to have that on there. It makes your palette more flexible, like I was saying. And then maybe I'll take my other color that's pretty light already, and I'll make it even lighter. Maybe I'll take out some of that red in there. Maybe a little bit more, maybe a little more yellow. There we go, so it's almost like a little tan color. So automatically I'm already expanding my palette but it's also giving it some contrast. Now it's not quite enough, and you might be thinking, well, what about an analogous color palette? Those are amazing, and those are very similar in value. For example, this guy right here. This is a fantastic color palette, and there's a lot of value in finding colors that close to each other on the, on the color wheel, and uh, that's really, really good. But if you were just to have these colors, it makes it very difficult. So the better option would be is to add the dark, dark colors and a really light color in there, so that you have some options when you're using this as a palette. Tip number three is one that I use all the time, especially right after I finish making a palette and I feel pretty confident 
but I don't know if they're completely unified. Now, one way to do that, to help yourself out, it's a little trick that I do, which is I add another layer right above it, and then I add any color, any color. If I wanna make it a warmer, for example, if I wanna make it a warmer uh, palette, then I'll add a yellow on top, and then all I have to do is go over here and change it to color, but I want my opacity, that's a little crazy, so I'll take my opacity slider, take it to zero, and then slowly move up to the right. You don't need a lot. Move up to the right and you'll start seeing it. There you go. See how much warmer that's getting? But it's adding that yellow equally to each of them so it helps unify the palette as one, which is really a handy trick. And like I had earlier, I had like a pink color, right? Watch this. Look how cool that looks. That's a whole new palette that you have there. It adds just a little bit of pink to it. You can even go, instead of just color, you can just change it to overlay and that gives you some other options as well but not as dramatic, I like to use color, but that's just something I do at the very end of my color palette making experience to kind of get everything to feel like it's unified. Tip number four, test out your colors against each other. Color is relative, so it depends on what it's against. If you look at this little square right here, it's this uh, tan color, you put it on this green or the other darker tan or this purple, and this color looks very different. It almost looks green right here but it changes, so it's really important that when we look at our palette that we see the colors not just next to each other or nearby each other, but on top of each other. A good starting point is take your darkest color and put that in the background and then move your palette up and put it on there and then move your palette on a really light, on your lightest, maybe white's gonna be my light color on here. And you can see how they interact and how they're gonna behave and you're like, oh, maybe I need to tweak that blue for when it's dark because it just, is a little bit too vibrant on there and I can tweak that blue up here maybe and let's see yeah, right here there we go and let's maybe I, I feel like it needs to be a little bit less vibrant when it's on that blue so it stands out a little bit more and that's okay I can make those changes and now I just have another blue option uh, that's part of my palette but I couldn't tell unless I put it on top of it it's also another way that I build my palette is that when I'm testing out new colors let's say I want another like a darker, almost like a, yeah, just another darker, like a orangier color to go along on here. I'm gonna test it out on top of it because I wanna see how much different it really is. But if I do it right here, sometimes it's really hard to tell, like right here. It's hard to tell the difference between those two yellows until I put it on there. I'm like, okay, that's not enough contrast. So I need to go on there and tweak it just a little bit more. And then I can do the same thing with my red. If I wanna go pink, and look, that doesn't look like enough, so I'm gonna add a little, or take out a little bit more magenta. There we go. And so that's how I make my palettes whenever I'm drawing them. I just do them over top of each other so that I can see, because color really is relative and you wanna see them on top of their other colors to see how they interact. All right, last but not least is tip number five, get adventurous with color. Don't be afraid to inject some really interesting colors into your palette, maybe ones that you haven't really thought to use before because there is a way to integrate them in there even if it's just an accent color. But one way I like to do this is I look at my color wheel and then I'll try to do look at my complementary colors so the color right across the wheel so for this purple it would be yellow but I try to go near opposites instead of just keeping it directly opposite because directly opposite is pretty intense. So if you just knock it down one or two off to the side, you get those near opposites and it makes it just a little bit, makes it sing just right and uh, it introduces a little slightly different color in your palette so it's not so predictable. But another way you can do this too is just by picking a random, let's go back to my CMYK slider. Just picking another like, oh, like a color you would never really use. Just try it. Just throw it into your palette. So let's use this palette right here. Maybe like this, what is it like a, oh, it's like a greenish puke color. Let's try it out. Yeah, I would never ever really pick this color by itself. And maybe I might need to tweak it just a little bit after I've chosen it. It looks like baby poop. But when you put it all together, oh, let's see how it plays on all of these. It doesn't look half bad. It actually kind of looks nice in there. So don't be afraid to throw in a random color. Like I said, you don't have to use it for everything. It could be just an accent color, but it's one way that I've just kind of found my palettes to be really interesting is by just throwing in some really funky color in there. I know it seems kind of weird, but adding that funky color in there really does just make it a more unique palette. 
Well, there you have it. Five tips on creating your own dynamic custom color palettes for your next digital illustration or design. Hopefully this video has helped you in some way or another. And if you have any color palette tips that you wanna share, please do that in the comments below. That'd be really helpful and I'm really curious. Thank you guys, please subscribe to the channel. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. It'll help me keep doing things just like this. All right, I'll see you guys next time.